In this tutorial, we will take a look at how to make and receive calls with JavaScript code. If you prefer a written format, I have linked the blog post to go along with this tutorial in the description. All the code that we will be using is also uploaded onto a GitHub repository. Let's dive right in. So for this tutorial, make sure you have Node.js installed. Also, a package manager for Node.js will be required. npm or yar is your choice. We also would need ngrok to create an HTTP tunnel. We start by creating a new directory, js-calls, and navigating to that directory in a terminal. Once that is done, we initialize a new Node.js project using yarn init by accepting all the defaults. Next, we add a few dependencies. We add Express, that is a web framework, Morgan, a request logger for Express.js, the Vonage server SDK for Node.js, and .env to manage the environment variables. Give it a bit, and once that is installed, we will go ahead and add a new development dependency, Nodemon. Nodemon restarts our application without having us to restart it manually. Now, let's open a code editor like Visual Studio Code. At this point, I typically like to go into the package.json file and add a couple of scripts. Now, at this point, we would need a Vonage API account. In order to get a Vonage API account, navigate to dashboard.nextmo.com. Once you get there, click on sign up and create a new account. When you sign up for the Vonage API account for the first time, you also get some free credits. Once you reach the Vonage API dashboard, click on the Your Applications tab on the sidebar. Create a new application on the Vonage dashboard and give your application a friendly name. Next, generate a public and private key pair and save the private key to your project directory. Here I am navigating to my project directory and renaming the file and saving it. Once that is done, scroll down in the window and click on Generate New Application. Once that is done, you will get an application ID. Once you have the application ID, scroll down on the sidebar and get to the Numbers section. Click on Buy Numbers. For this tutorial, I will be buying a new number that is based in the United States and has the voice feature enabled. I will click on search and buy the first number that appears in the list. I will click on buy again to confirm my purchase. Note that you have some free credits in your account so this won't be a problem at the moment. Now once you have purchased a number, go back to the your applications page and click on the application that you have just created. Scroll down in the application overview page and click on the link button next to the number you just bought that it is now linked to our application. Now we have the Vonage number that is linked to this application and also the application ID. We will use this information in the next parts of this tutorial. Now go back to the code editor and create a new file called .env. This file will contain all our environment variables that we will be using in this tutorial. The two number will be a default number that we will call through this application. The Vonage number was the number you just bought. The Vonage application ID, API key and secret are available on the Vonage dashboard itself. The Vonage private key path will contain the absolute path to the private key file that you had downloaded while generating the application. And port. I'll be assuming the port value to be 5000. Once you have filled all the values into the .env file, we will create a new index.js file. This will be the first JavaScript file that we create. We will import the .env module as early as possible in our code and configure it to load all our environment variables. Next, we import all our dependencies one by one. We first import Vonage server SDK, then Express.js, and then we import the Morgan middleware. Once we have imported all the dependencies, we will have to instantiate a new Express.js application 
had an instance of the Vonage class. The Vonage class constructor in the SDK given accepts an object as an argument. This object will contain the API key that is available in the process.env object. The API secret that is also available in the process.env object. The application ID and the private key path. Once we have instantiated Express and Vonage, we have to configure the Express application to use the Morgan middleware as well as enable to parse the JSON contained in a request body. In order to make a call using the SDK, we have to call the vonage.calls.create method. This method takes the object as the first argument and a callback function as the second argument. The object in the first argument will contain a property named two, which will be an array of objects that have the type and the number properties within them. Here we are accessing the two number from the environment variable. Then it should also contain a from property that should also be an object that has a type and a number associated with it. Here I am using the Vonage number as the from number. Next up, we have to have a next more call control object, also known as NCCO, that will define the call flow with the voice API. This NCCO object is an array that has certain objects. Now these objects must have a property named action. Here I am using the talk action, which also requires us to use the text property to define the text that will be used to synthesize a voice from. This might be a great time to take a look at the documentation on the Vonage portal. Here I am taking a look at the API reference to make sure that the fields that I am sending are the correct ones. Next we take a look at the call control object documentation that defines that we can actually perform many more actions. The talk action uses a text to speech module to generate a voice depending on the text that we give it. The stream action can be used to play an existing audio file into a call. Heading back to the code, our callback function takes two arguments, an error and a response that is given by the Vonage API. Here in our code, if there is an error, we will log the error to the console and same goes for the response. At this point, we have a basic structure ready for making a call. Now if you try to run it using yarn dev, the application should throw an error saying that the voice application capabilities are not enabled on our application. And that is true. If we head back to the dashboard and click on the your applications tab and click on our project, then click on the edit button that is there on that page and scroll down, we will see various capabilities that can be enabled. We need the voice capability to be enabled for our Vonage application to allow us to make and receive calls. These endpoints can either be GET or POST endpoints as we can see that we can select between the two. Back in our code editor, let us define a new HTTP POST endpoint at slash events using express. For the request handler, we will simply take the request body and log it to the console. Apart from this, we will send a HTTP status code of 200 to any client making the request. Let us assume that we will be using the slash answers route for the answer URL endpoint. Here I am creating a placeholder for that. Next, 
we have to configure the express js application to listen on the port that we had defined in the env file once the application starts running on the specified port we will log to the console that the application is running on the specified port the endpoints that we just created are still not accessible to the Vonage servers because they are running on localhost. Here we have to use ngrok to create a publicly accessible HTTP tunnel. We run ngrok HTTP 5000 to forward all the traffic that is coming in from that tunnel to the port 5000. The web interface URL allows us to gain access to a web UI where we can easily inspect all the requests that are coming into the tunnel. We will use one of the tunnel URLs, copy it to the Vonage dashboard, into the text fields where we have to provide the endpoints and add the routes of the endpoints that we created in our application right now. I'll change these endpoints to be HTTP POST endpoints and click on save changes. If we run the application now, you will see that an object is printed onto the console. This is an outbound call request made to the voice API. The events endpoint that we had created will be receiving as and when different events take place within the call flow. Wait a minute, I'm receiving a call. This call was made from JavaScript. As you could hear, we successfully made a call using JavaScript. Let's see how we can clean this up a little bit further. Instead of calling the vonage.calls.create method here, we can create a new get route with slash call, which will create a call request for us whenever a get request is made to this endpoint. In this route, we will send an OK message to all the clients. Instead of the two number that we specified during the earlier invocation, here I will be accessing the request.query object. Call will be made to a different number with a different message which will be defined using the query parameters. Now if we make a curl request to this endpoint to my phone number with a custom message that should work too. Yep, I got a call again. Let's hear a call recording one more time. You just got recalled. Up to this part, we learned how to create a call request and make a call to someone using JavaScript code and the Vonage voice APIs. And this was just a basic overview how the voice API works. Now we will be taking a look at how to handle inbound calls. You might remember that we created a slash answer route for the answer URL endpoint. We will delete the to do comment that we left there. And for this endpoint, we just have to respond with this JSON representation of an NCCO object that was the call control object. So for this one, I will be copying the call control object that we uh, used to create the call and I will paste it in here. Now for the message that we will be using for the talk action, I will be changing that in a bit. Let us get access to the number from which the call is being made from and split all the digits. This will be helpful in synthesizing the speech. So now we can uh, change the message used for the talk action. I'll be right. Uh, I'll, I'll write thank you for calling from and then I'll concatenate the from number. Now we also have the ability to stream different audio files that are hosted online using the stream action. So I'll use the stream action and in the stream URL property, I'll provide a link to a recrawl mp3 
that will be played into the call whenever a person calls in to our Vonish number. This is also a basic overview of how to receive an inbound call. You can also accept user input using DTMF tones and speech recognition. But let me just make a call to the Vonage number once now. Thank you for calling from 2635. And that was really great to hear. Our application worked correctly. The NCCO defined the call flow as we expected it to be. All the code that we just used is also available on the GitHub repository linked in the description below. That was it for this video. Do leave a comment below or create a ticket in the GitHub repository if you have any trouble following along this tutorial.